recognize these faces here. Um, these are my awesomely supportive parents. Before I left, I did a, a little uh, countdown before I left um, to get myself a bunch of Instagram followers. So, um, and a lot of people did ask me, like, so why did you go on this trip, right? Um, I went on it because I love adventure and I love to travel by bicycle. I think it's like one of the coolest ways to um, experience uh, a place because you're completely surrounded by what you're going through. Um, and I was for a long time in Dillon. I moved out in the spring, just as a little background. Um, went to Italy for the summer as I've done for a long time. And then I kind of had this like in-between time to be able to go and travel. Um, and it's kind of like my natural state of being to be like flitting around like doing stuff like this. So um, I found a really great quote by Everett Ruiz, if any of you guys know who that is. He was a 1930s um, artist, explorer, adventurer. And he said, uh, by the strength of my arm, by the sight of my eye, by the skills of my fingers, I swear, as long as life dwells in me, Never will I follow any way but the sweeping way of the wind. So, <coughs> off I went. Um, and I have all the gear for it, too, so there's no excuse to not go. Didn't ever Bruce get lost? And he he disappeared down. in, like, the Utah Canyon land without a whisper. Yeah. And was never found. Um, no, on my no. bicycle here. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> That's on my bike. I thought they'd become a dumber. Oh, oh, my bike is in this bag right here. And it's in pieces. Um, people ask me how much it weighs. I have no idea. I don't, probably don't really want to know. It weighs a ton. Like I, said, <laughs> I, I lifted it into the van. That's, the shuttle that's, van. That's because you're a wuss, Dad. Yeah. Oh. Just kidding. Oh. <laughs> oh. I'm joking. Right. I'm joking. He's my dad. I so a few terms uh, that'll help you understand this better. Uh, first of all, warm showers. Um, it's a network, a hospitality network for cyclists. It's a mutual hospitality thing. So it's comprised of a lot of people who are bike tourists like myself, cyclists, travelers, or actually some people that just were like, why are all these bicycles riding past my house all the time? And they talked to one of us, and then they ended up being hosts. So it's online, and it's an organized thing, and it's free of charge. Um, gorilla camping. That's when you uh, find somewhere to camp that's not in a campground, in the woods, perhaps, like I did here in Arizona. Um, behind a fire station, behind a church, in a culvert, you know, <laughs> whatever. Um, I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> Dad knew all about where I was, though, because yes. I shared my Google location services with him Addictive and mom. Time. And uh, at first that worked out well because it kept Dad amused. But then you know what happens like when you go out of service and your little dot goes around in circles and you're not actually... Or goes backwards. Or goes backwards. Miles. Like when I go, when I forget something at camp and then I get like 17 messages from my parents like, why are you going backwards? Where's your dot? Why is it, why is it in a field? In a gravel pit. At one time I stopped, I stopped for lunch like later on in the tour at a, at a hospital because it was out of the wind and there's a bench. And I thought later like, oh my God, my parents probably think I'm dead. <laughs> I miss that one. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the route basically that I took when I started up here in Berkeley. And so I came, I came down the California coast first, got to San Diego, and I took a giant left turn and went all the way across to St. Augustine. Um, started in Berkeley, as I said, on October 7th, um, spending some time with my brother and his girlfriend, and this is my uncle Brian, mom's brother. Um, on the ferry ride over, the very first day, I met these two sisters, and this is Colette. She lives in uh, Pismo Beach. They're cyclists themselves. And she said later on, if I end up in Pismo Beach and she's there, she'll uh, put me up for the night. Um, Big Sur was one of the coolest parts of my whole trip, and I got there like in the first few days. Um, this is like that classic bridge that everybody thinks about. Um, and if you, any of you guys know that Big Sur had a whole bunch of like mudslides, landslides from forest fires the summer before. So they had three closures at one point. One of them was south of Big Sur Pfeiffer State Park, and that one's now reopened. But the one uh, by Gorda, about 16 miles south of that, doesn't reopen until this summer. So I had to figure out how I was going to get around that thing or what I was going to do. And that unfolded in a cool way, as they always do. But first I had to get there. I was using, um, this is the first slide closure. That bridge was still closed when I came in. 
so the locals had um, built a path for themselves and what they would kind of do, it's like a two mile long path because the bridge was out so they, a lot of people would park a car at the south side and a car at the north side and they would walk over, take their kids to school, walk back, walk over, get their car, drive into Carmel, go to the store, hike all their groceries back, drive home. So it was like a whole day. So to everyone's amusement, I hiked my gear and my bike up the trail um, so that I could stay here. Um, and I got to ride the big, like one of the most beautiful sections of the Big Sur Coast with zero traffic, um, which was probably never gonna happen again, so that was really cool. And I stayed with uh, friends of friends, um, this girl that I worked with at, at the Fondue restaurant in Dillon, um, hooked me up with some of her friends, like these off the grid hippie types. <laughs> they were wonderful. I had, a, I had a, a tent set up on a lawn that looked over the entire coast. I could see whales out of my door and things like that. And then we got to figure out how to go through this close slide. So I was going to go back out and ride all the way around to Highway 101 and then end up by like San Simeon, south of there. When I was in the in um, that area talking with the locals, they're like, I would, there's one more road, but I wouldn't ride on it, it's really busy. You could hitchhike or you could just ride through the slide at night when there's nobody there. And I'm like, cool. <laughs> Let's do it. Good thing you didn't know all this stuff, right? So, so they, said, they said, do it between midnight and 3 a.m. So I said, well, that sounds entertaining. So I made myself some food, and I watched the sunset, and then I fell asleep for a while, and I woke up at 11, packed up my stuff, and rode through the close light at night with no lights because I didn't want to get a trespassing ticket. And then on the other side, I ended up drinking wine with these fine people. So at the, at the SEAL viewing station in um, San Simeon, I met this guy named Alan who ended up inviting me over to stay with his wife and him in Paso Robles. So I made a detour inland that I didn't you know, plan on, but it was awesome. I stayed with him for two days. And then I stayed with them for actually two more nights on the coast in Morro Bay in this lady Judy's family's cabin. So, and I ended up staying in Pismo Beach with Colette, the lady that I met on the ferry. She was really awesome. Her, her house was at the top of like the steepest hill in California. <laughs> and she rode me out the next morning, which was great. Um, California coast was also, it's a destination, a worldwide destination for cyclists. So I met tons and tons of people from all over the world. Um, including, this is uh, Rosie and this is Phil here, they're from Switzerland, and this is Dan from Canada. Um, Dan was going from Seattle to San Diego, and these two were going from Alaska to the tip of Baja. Mm -hmm. And I now have an invitation to go stay with them, and you can <laughs> see their ma the Matterhorn from their kitchen window. So. Um, here's where I got to San Diego, I stayed with my brother's girlfriend's cousin, you can follow that. And then I took a giant left turn and went into Eastern California, um, where I found the border wall, which was neat. <laughs> and then I had a rest day at Tumba Hot Springs, where I found this Bloody Mary with bacon, french fries, and a hamburger. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, and then the next day I had a 2,500 to 3,000 foot descent down into the desert, like the for real Imperial desert. Valley. Imperial Valley. Imperial um, Valley. In Glamis, the like motorized capital of California, I found I met um, one of the only other single bike tourist ladies that I met on this trip besides me, uh, Catherine, and her bike Joni. So my bike Penny and Joni really bonded. <laughs> and I still keep in touch with Catherine. She had knee issues and she had to bail and went back to Portland, but we still keep in touch. I kept going into, uh, into the desert, um, which was awesome. I love the desert and made it to Phoenix. Um, in time to see these two, you might recognize those faces, and they got me one of the nicest hotel rooms that I had on the trip. <laughs> uh, in that Tonto Basin, with us. Arizona, um, I got to start experiencing some Native American culture and learning about it. This was uh, the Salado people, the dwellers. Um, in Globe, I befriended the camp hosts. Um, Myr Myrna and Alan, and we also are still in touch. They called me at the end of my trip to see how I was doing. 
Um, they let me sleep in their RV one night when it was like 30 degrees. Yeah. They're really great people. Um, then I had a monster climb to get out of there, which was cool with me. I like to climb. And I wasn't really sure what I was going to do for Thanksgiving because right about now it was turning into Thanksgiving and I had no plans at all the day before Thanksgiving. But I had a, a plan about five to seven days out, so I knew I was going to go to the Simpson Hotel because they have a little trailer behind it um, where they let cyclists stay for free. Was that in Duncan? It's in Duncan, Duncan Arizona. Arizona. Yeah. Um, a, lot of, a lot of places on this route have kind of started to offer yeah. things for cyclists, so I, always, I began to ask, like, oh, hey, I'm a cyclist. <laughs> Do you guys have anywhere for us to stay? So there was no electricity or anything, but it was free and it had a bed. And um, When I left after having Thanksgiving at Simpson Hotel, um, I was making my way across the desert some more in the middle of nowhere and uh, two bolts on my rear rack sheared and my rear rack fell off while I was riding. <laughs> um, never a dull moment. So I pulled over and uh, talked to the first people that I saw, um, including Fred here, who is a pilot in training, 80 years old, and just happens to be like a metal worker and like he uh, used some bailing wire, electric tape, to, and some bolts that were like two different sizes and, you know, rigged my rack back together so that I could make it to Silver City to a mechanic and get the parts I needed. Um, and I will say, bailing wire, electric tape, and zip ties can fix MacGyver. <laughs> and if you can't do that, Amazon Prime. Two-day shipping is the best thing ever. So I, this is the same day I got my rack all back together and made this climb up Mule Creek, um, not very far away from the New Mexico border, and camped. Um, I made it there right at dark. And then I was in New Mexico! <laughs> <laughs> And in New Mexico, I had planned to stay with Eleanor Wooten, who is, um, her late husband Tom worked with mom in the Native, Native Plants, of, oh, Native Plants Native Society. Plant Society. Um, Eleanor put me up for a few nights, um, a really, really cool lady, um, lives in a beautiful spot outside of Silver City in Cliff, um, and there was like a really cool community there, uh, people that living in all sorts of different kinds of like a school bus, uh, like earthen houses, built by hand, everybody's like totally off the grid, they have their own little like sewer and water system, they pay like zero rent, it's really cool, they all take care of each other. And Joseph is in that community and he's one of Eleanor's best friends and he took me hiking in the Gila wilderness, which was really, really cool and really ugly. And then I got the mother of all flats, <laughs> like Try and I don't know how that happened, but there was no avoiding it. So, um, and for those of you that were wondering how many flats I got on this trip, that's like one of the questions I get a lot. Like, too many to count. Like I lost track, and I patch I would patch my tubes like three or four times each before I threw them away. Um, in Silver City, I stayed with this girl here, Noelle, and Susan, who's up there, who I met at the the land trust potluck, and they invited me to come stay with them in Silver City. Um, I was going to go ride my bike up to the Gila Monument, but I wanted to spend more time with them, and they actually said they hadn't seen it in a while, so we did like a family trip to the um, Cliff Dwelling Monument and the Hot Springs. Yeah. Um, and it's good I had a rest because after that I climbed up to um, 8,828 feet, mm -hmm. top of the <laughs> Continental Divide here at Emory Pass, and the highest point on this trip. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to leave, but it was really good I did because the next day it snowed for the first time. Um, and that was when I, I raced a storm, out, outran a storm barely and got to Las Cruces, New Mexico um, from Truth or Consequences. And then I entered into Texas, where everything is bigger, even the dinosaurs. <laughs> and right when I got over the border into El Paso, I went off a curb I didn't see and cracked my panniers. Um, these the parts that hold the clips onto the rack. Um, so right when I got into Texas, the fun began. So I was in uh, El Paso for an extra day trying to find parts and order them on Amazon Prime to get them shipped ahead of me. Um, and then you I was... Did you get any bailing point for that? <laughs> that was, well, I did. I zip tied them to my rack, like, and then wrapped it with an old tube to keep them together. So, kind of, yeah. Um, and then I was in the... Um, Chihuahuan Desert for a really long time, 
um, which was really interesting because obviously there's not a whole lot of water, so I had to either carry a lot of water and or plan my days from water to water. So it's some long days, like 60, 70 miles a lot, and a lot of wind. Headwinds? Headwinds, crosswinds, everything. I don't even know what was going on. Um, and this was here in Marathon, Texas. This is another really cool place that offers cyclists uh, a free night. And then I say for two nights because I liked it so much. Is that your account? Is that the place you stay? That's where I stayed, yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's called the Beehive. <laughs> oh, I love it. Silva, wow. yeah. explain your flag. Like oh, yeah, the flag. Yeah, you can look into that. So the flag, I, thanks, Mom, I picked up in Glamis on the side of the road. Probably fell off somebody's dune buggy. And I, like, did one of these, like, back and forth things. And was like, yeah, I'm going to take that. Like, <laughs> sawed it off on the side of the road with a knife, and this became, now she's the pirate ship pitch. <laughs> pirate ship pitch. And that stayed with you the rest of the stayed trip. Stayed with me the rest of the trip. Um, I made it to Del Rio in time for Christmas, and I was having knee problems. I had, like, a, an inner knee, like, ligament thing that was bothering me. Um, and I was, for a while, unsure if I was going to be able to keep riding or not. And I ended up staying in Del Rio and resting it for, like, seven days. Um, the first night I got to Del Rio, like, since it was getting cold at night and it was raining and snowing, or not snowing yet, and windy, I would have to find some more creative places to stay indoors. And so I started emailing Rotary Clubs because Rotary is cool. <laughs> and uh, in Del Rio, here the manager of the Ramada Inn was in Rotary, and he comped me a room for the night. And it was like, besides the room I had with my parents, it was the nicest the nicest room I had, and the night before that I had been poured on. All my stuff was wet, so I like spread it out all over the room. And that's how you know there's a cyclist there. <laughs> um, and then for the rest of the time I stayed with um, Warm Showers host named Lisa here. And at Christmas, the day of Christmas, um, there was another cyclist that stayed with us too, and he's from Ireland, so we had a really strange little family Christmas. <laughs> Um, and then uh, Lisa ended up giving me a ride to Austin um, so that I could keep recovering my knee. And I had plans to stay with the Cottons, which are kind of uh, aunts and uncles basically. But I hadn't really spent a whole lot of time with them until now. But we're now we're best friends. And Casey here, my uncle, is, was a really good drinking buddy. <laughs> Two drinks at a time. I loved it. It was great. <laughs> That's his idea. So there's the, the Christmas Texas scene in the house. Um, when I left, I finally felt like after 12 days I could start riding again. Um, so I headed out into East Texas and stayed with this warm shower host who were, again, like this really quirky off-the-grid family. Um, they were hydroponic lettuce farmers. And I woke up in the morning to find a goat looking at me over the like dog door that was blocking all animals from getting into my room, apparently. Wow. And then I went on to um, stay with Carol here, and she is like one of the like infamous warm shower hosts along the route that all of the cyclists talk about. She's 88. She's been hosting cyclists for about 10 years at least. She has a whole binder. She has us all fill out a little piece of paper and takes our picture. Aww. And this is her showing me a picture of Ian, the Irish guy who I'd spent Christmas with, who was with her earlier in the year. Um, when I left there, uh, I made it to Richards, Texas, and stayed at another little, like, kind of cyclist-related lodging. Um, and the day that I left there, a little baby cow was born, and they named it Silva. <laughs> so Silva's out there somewhere, being a cow. Um, so this was another one of my creative um, housing situations. I emailed uh, a bunch of campgrounds, and this one just happened to be a nudist resort. <laughs> and they were just floored. They, they had like never heard of anything like this before, and they were so nice. Um, Cindy cooked me dinner, and they comped me a cabin, and like were coming by and giving me like a robe so I'd go to the pool and not be cold, and like um, they made me breakfast and everybody was closed because it was cold. But they told me to come back on Easter because apparently, apparently they hide like a thousand Easter eggs with silver dollars in them. And if you can imagine, it's warm then, so there's like two to three to four hundred naked adults running around looking for Easter eggs. That would be cool. Sounds entertaining. So, 
<laughs> See you all there. See you all there. So I finally made it to Louisiana on January 13th, and I was so stoked to get out of Texas because I'd had rain, snow, flats, uh, knee problems, Wind. Well, you know, you name it. And right before I got to the border, my tire failed, my rear one. Um, it had had a little gash in it, and it kept pinching my tubes, um, but it just kept, like, I think I replaced a tube three times that day. So I went to Maryville, um, Louisiana, six miles over the Texas border, ordered myself a tire to come two days away, um, and then this happened. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought I was skipping winter. What's that mean, John? <laughs> What's that mean? <laughs> no, I'm asking John. Yeah, no, 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 no. What's that mean? What the flip? What the frost? What the frost? <laughs> what the frost? What the freezing? So one of the words you can't say on radio. Yeah. Or recorded phone. Um, so I was in Maryville, I think, for. Four, three, three days and four nights, I think, staying in a warm showers post. There was a trailer behind a, a museum. Um, the top temperature in there was 60 degrees with a little space heater, but it was way better than being outside. And it was free of charge, thank goodness. So I waited for my tire, replaced my tire, and then I waited for the roads to get, like, sort of better. <laughs> the first day was okay. The second day, I went, I, I fell <laughs> on some ice. But I made it through that. Even the swamps were frozen. Like, it was very cold. It was um, two or three days of riding in weather that was like between 20 and 35 degrees. So, down jacket. And then after it stopped snowing, it started raining um, when I was trying to get uh, to Baton Rouge. So it was kind of like... This, this pattern started that continued for a while where it was like ride a day, rest a day, because it was raining. Um, and this day I hid out in somebody's house for one giant rainstorm. I hid out in a restaurant and they fed me crawfish etouffee through a second one. <laughs> and then I finally made it to a Catholic church in Morganza, Louisiana, where I spread my crap out all over the church. <laughs> um, again, how you know there's a cyclist. And I slept on a little um, bench in the corner. Finally made it to Baton Rouge. There's the big old Mississippi and some sun. I stayed with another Warm Showers host named Mark, who actually is one of the founding members of Warm Showers and who kind of helped create it way back in the day. And we met the LSU mascot, Mike the Tiger, before I made my way towards Louisiana. Slept in a garage on the way there, which was cool. Um, and then I made it to New Orleans, which was one of the things I was looking forward to the very most. Um, and, and it was Mardi Gras. Um, not, not Mardi Gras the day, but Mardi Gras the season. So I got to see some parades and um, eat a whole lot of king cake, which is like a, a kind of like a donut, like a, a traditional food. And beignets. I ate my weight in beignets at Cafe du Monde. I saw some voodoo stuff, which was cool. King cake. And the Sue I stayed with, her name's Tammy. She's a friend of a friend. Um, actually, I, I posted on Facebook like I did occasionally, does anybody know anybody in New Orleans? And uh, a friend in Italy hooked me up with her. So, uh, seafood boil. If any of you have ever been down there, they do a big, huge boil of everything that you can get from the sea, crabs and crawdads and corn and everything else, and then you just stuff yourself. <laughs> Um, after four, four or five days in New, or in New Orleans, I kept on going, made it over the Alabama border. Um, this is the shed, it's a nationally renowned barbecue joint. Um, I stayed with a warm shower host who took me there. And then I uh, had my first day of camping in a very long time under a building here in, on Dauphin Island. And I had a pretty awesome sunset too. Took the ferry over and then finally made it to Florida. Um, and then if any of you have ever been to the like Destin area, there's uh, sugar sand and it's like so fine um, and so white and it squeaks under your feet every time you walk. It's pretty cool. Um, and the actual, the route goes inland from Pensacola, but I decided to stick to the coast because it was so beautiful and I wanted to see this part of the country. 
um, I had like one day of sun and one day of clouds but no rain and then it started pouring so I ended up cutting back inland instead of sticking to the coast which was beautiful but I missed some some more Gulf Coast uh, because it was like this um, one day I had to just kind of make some distance and so I rode I think six hours in, in pouring rain um, to get to a pizza hut where I was supposed to meet a warm showers host <laughs> Um, the Warm Showers host actually never showed up, which is kind of weird. It's the first time that's ever happened to anyone that I know of. Um, and I was talking with a waitress about everything, and she always sees uh, Warm Showers cyclists there, and he meets the, the host meets in there. Um, and there was a guy behind me who was like, I have a, a three-bedroom house. You're welcome to stay there for as long as you want. I know it's raining again tomorrow. You can stay there. So... Again, I went there and took over this poor man's house with all my wet stuff, because um, everything was wet. Dried it out, stayed there two nights, um, and then headed on my way. And this is in Monticello, uh, Florida, in the, in the woods again. And I stayed with uh, more warm showers host, Maria, and her wife, Diane. Uh, Maria has MS, and Diane has broken like three different bones in the last month, and they're trying to move and all this stuff, and they're still hosting us crazy people. So they're incredibly nice. I help them like feed their goats and get their eggs and whatever I could do to help them. Um, and then I camped uh, behind a Baptist church in uh, Wellborn, Florida, middle of nowhere. Um, and in the middle of the night, woke to uh, what I thought was rain, but was actually sprinklers. <laughs> so I got up and... Uh, Put whatever random things I could find on the top of the sprinkler to make them yeah. stop and then went back to bed. <laughs> um, the next day, this was one of the coolest days at the end of the trip, I pulled over in a driveway to check my map and this woman said, can I help you? And I said, oh, I'm pretty good. She said, here, have some water, here, have some strawberries, here, go to this park down the road, you can't miss it. And she beat me there and paid my admission into the <laughs> park. Um, and she also told me to like go stop by this um, dive shop that's world famous, if you're a cave diver, called Amigos. People come from all over the world. Like when I was there, there was some Croatians, some Swiss people, and some Canadians that came through to get their tanks filled and go diving. Because there's like hundreds of caves to dive in in this area outside of Gainesville. Um, and in Gainesville, I spent a couple days because I met up with a some parents of this guy who used to deliver beer at the restaurant I was working at. He had been telling them about my trip and they wanted to come and, and meet me. So I stayed an extra day for that. And then this is Palatka, which is just like a nowhere kind of place in, near St. Augustine. Um, this is the night before my trip was over. I met um, John and his wife Mildred. John was just like hanging out by the river where I was hanging out. We started talking and he said he'd never met anybody that was doing this kind of thing. And, uh, a crazy person. A crazy person. <laughs> and they uh, had me over for breakfast the next day. They offered to let me stay in their house, but I already set my tent up behind the fire station. <laughs> Um, and they called the paper, the local paper, and tried to get them to write an article about me and stuff. They were really cute. And then they actually drove to St. Augustine, which is about an hour by car, and met me at the end to cheer me into the finish line. So, really cool. And then in St. Augustine, I went to the beach to celebrate um, and ate a lot of fish. And then I went to um, Orlando, Florida. I have a friend there um, that I hadn't seen in a long time, and he picked me up, and I got to just relax and hang out by the pool and um, my brother came to join me too and we went to Universal Studios as adults which is a real trip <laughs> about like sensory overloaded a lot <laughs> and then uh, we all went to a uh, Braves versus Nationals game spring training in Orlando um, more celebration and uh, the rest is history <laughs> till, till the next tour <laughs> Are you going to try something again, do a different route, do, you want to do this again? Or
Tell them about when you went to um, Vietnam and Thailand and, um, well, she went on a bike tour with a group, um, not a large group, just a group of friends. five basically. of us, yeah. Yeah. For six weeks, I guess, and it was John. through northern Vietnam and Thailand. Jail. All right. That's another, that's Jerry, another talk. Another time. <laughs> you should uh, check into the tour of the Swan River Valley in Montana out of Missoula. It's a great, great Awesome. But you're riding with. So are we doing the time? I'll just steal the ride. Let's sit with Greg. I haven't had a chance. Awesome. Thank you guys. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Greg, where are we? Oh, yeah. Greg. Courtyard. Courtyard. Hey, Sue. Good job. Nice Thank you. That was neat. So, uh, well, you got quite a crowd here meeting people. Yeah, it's really fun. She does. I love to meet people. I left this on. Oh, thanks, Mom. <laughs> 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 <laugh